The gospel has a deep foundation of information that culminates with the saving message that Christ came to die on the cross and that we must repent and follow him. But that foundation may be a lot deeper than you think. Welcome to the Unhidden Gospel, a deep dive into the biblical gospel. Now check out this coffee cup. It's a pretty simple cup, right? It just holds your coffee so that you can drink it. But how much went into making this cup that you never even think about, but which has made this cup possible? Somebody had to design the cup so that it was weighted properly and didn't fall over easily. Then of course there's the materials. Someone had to determine what kind of material would be able to hold the hot liquid and be formed into this shape. And it had to be rigid enough to hold up. Someone had to make it so a lid could be placed on it and not just fall off or leak. They also had to make sure all the materials were something that would be available for the amount of cups they needed to produce. They had to ensure that they had the resources to produce the cup to meet demand and were able to ship it to their buyers. This means that they had to gain knowledge about all kinds of different things, like freights, weights, and how many cups to put in a case, etc, etc, etc. A very significant amount of thought went into this cup before it ever reached my hand. A lot of science and math were used to make just a simple cup. A cup that you and I take for granted. And of course, that couldn't be done by one person at one time, but it's a culmination of many people's efforts over time. And you know what else is incredible? Something this simple has a shocking amount of things that can be observed about it. It is a circular shape. It is a cylinder. The cylinder down at the bottom is smaller than the opening up at the top. It kind of tapers out. It is a kind of styrofoamy material. It's got these gray kind of liney things, like ziggy zaggies. Then you've got the design of the off and on, which is meant to be kind of <laughs> funny. This band is purple. The writing of that is kind of a grayish color. And then the writing on that is just the color of the cup uh, cut out of the purple. The lip here is kind of rolled and it's got this kind of hard edge. See the inside is kind of this coated paper. There's kind of a seam right there. Down at the bottom, it's got a whole lot of writing there. Uh, what else is there? Uh, oh, there's writing on this side here. It contains no polyesterine foam. Polyesterine. It's got little leafy pictures there. Caution, hot stuff inside. It's actually empty. I could measure the height, but uh, I'm not gonna do that. I could measure the diameter. Okay, I'm kind of running out. Hey, wait, look at that. It's got the Dixie logo there. It's it's easy to run out quickly with a little cup like this, but there's always something more, I guarantee you. There's something else there. Just let me think. This seam is visible from the outside as well. Right here, there's a little, uh, you know what it's called, lip. That's what it is. Right here at the ledge, it, uh, lip, it, it's, it's not the color, it's like the material. It, um, like, loses its foam. <laughs> that makes sense. I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but there's like this little shiny section, like right where they meet, where the paper is like, um, it's smooth, like uh, like the inside. The colors of these two different things are a little different. One is kind of black, and the other's like a gray. The pattern duplicates itself. Uh, it's on there twice, so, okay, that's kind of interesting. The paper here is not coated like the inside. It's just like uh, kind of regular paper, you know? Whereas this has that coating on it for the uh, liquid, obviously. This purple band is uh, wider than the other two bands. Uh, looks like this one might even be a little smaller than that one. Hmm. Cool. Let's see how many of these there are. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are nine of the gray squiggly doohead doodads. Plus you got these little ones at the bottom, which are presumably the same pattern, just kind of like cut off. So it really gets to this point where you're just like, there's nothing else about this cup that I can observe. There's like nothing. But there's always something, you know? There's always, always something. Okay, you're not gonna be able to see this on the camera, but there's a, like a little, little lip here. Right there, right there. Oh, it's where the, uh, like this foamy material kind of wraps around the cup, uh, the bottom edge of the cup there. So there's kind of a, a little seam, you know? A little, little seamy seam. Okay, I'm gonna stop for now. Guys, <laughs> I've gone too long, but undoubtedly there's more that could be absurd about this cup. Uh, as you can tell, the details get, you know, more specific, uh, but I could start like measuring the distance between these points. I could count how many points there are. You see, I'm thinking of more things as I go. One, two, three, four, you know, add them all up. Yeah, there's just so much I could observe about this tiny little cup. Sorry, man. There you go. Now, some of those observations are absurd and entirely unhelpful, but they do illustrate my point, and that is that the more you look, the more you find. And there is always more to find. And 
it's not even that hard to find it. You just have to kind of hunker down and keep looking. The more you look and the more you push yourself to find things, the more detailed and more obscure that your findings become, but they are still truths nonetheless. I would encourage you to try this on your own because it's actually pretty fun, believe it or not. Uh, so just find something random, the simpler the better actually, and just try and make as many observations as you can about it. When you think that you found everything, look again and find a couple more things and just repeat that process until you're like, okay, there's no way I'm gonna find anything else. This is driving me crazy. And, and then push yourself to find one more thing and then you'll see that no matter how long you keep looking, you're always gonna find at least one more thing. I've done so with this pair of scissors, which I've never observed in this way before, and these are the results on my screen now. I also could have made who knows how many measurements for the diameters, widths, and lengths of every section and piece, but for the sake of time and sanity, I did not do that. In general, the more you look, the more specific and detailed your observations become, and I know that I could have continued on staring at the scissors and made a lot more observations, but it actually gets pretty exhausting looking that close to the Go ahead and pause me and try it yourself if you like, or just keep watching, I'm not going to judge you too harshly, but it is a pretty cool demonstration, isn't it? This principle, of course, applies to the gospel, hence the fact that I'm talking about it, because you can look at the gospel and see its simplicity and think Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, repent, and follow him to be saved. You know, what more is there to know? But there is. There is a lot more to know. There's a lot more depth. And the better that we know it, the better that we can share it. And I can assure you, the details about the gospel are a lot more important than that of the cup. But thank you so much for watching. And as always, test my words, read your Bibles, and spread the truth.